Hey everyone and welcome, my name is Chief Ronka and today I want to show you how to create your custom courtiers for Crusader Kings 2. Now, I don't actually want to talk about how you create your characters that much because I think it is pretty straightforward. The easiest way to do this is by using the ruler designer and this is, as I said, very easy to comprehend so I don't want to bore you by explaining you how to do that. Now, what I do want to talk about though is how you can actually um, modify your character once you're already in game and also how you can modify uh, several characters because uh, using ruler designer only really allows you to change one uh, character and that may not be enough for you especially if you want to have a whole court of people. Uh, later on I will also show you um, some important things in the files and will also show you how you can transfer your character from one save file to another. But yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's actually start with editing our character while in the game. Now, um, in order to do this, you need to use console commands and I will leave a link in the description of this video that will uh, show you or link you to a list of uh, all of the console commands that are available in Crusader Kings 2. And um, well, you can just go through that list and pick any console command that you might want to use for whatever purpose, right? Um, but yeah, before we actually head over there, let me quickly show you an example on how to use these console commands. Now, first of what you need to do is open the console. Now, uh, this is usually done by pressing the tilde button, but that really depends on your keyboard. For me, it's a different button. It doesn't matter. You're probably going to figure out how to open the console. Once you've done that, I would recommend to, first of all, type in the console command char info. Now, this is technically only important if you want to modify any character other than your own character um, because you will for that you will need the character ID. If you want to just add your personal character you don't actually need the character ID because uh, any um, I guess any changes you make will default to your character unless you actually type in uh, a special character's ID. But yeah, let me quickly show you what that means. So once you have uh, typed in char info, you can obviously see the debug info and the most important information is obviously the character's ID. Now, um, what I, I think is the most important console command is the add trait or remove trait console command. And uh, that is obviously pretty straightforward. Adding a trait um, is easily done by well, type in an add underscore trait. Then obviously you need to uh, hit space and enter the name of the trait that you want to add to your character. And uh, well, usually these traits are named or have the same name in game as they have in the files. That is not always true, but as I said, I will show you later where you can actually find the true name of each of the uh, traits. But yeah, uh, for now you can just trust me that for example the trait diligent is called diligent. So um, add trait diligent, I'm not gonna add any character ID because this will default to my character and now all of a sudden Theobracken is diligent. Now if we want to change the traits of our wife, as you can see I've already added the trait attractive to our, my, my wife, I now want to remove that because she isn't actually all that attractive. So you need to type in remove underscore trait and now um, this is actually an example, this is why I actually wanted to show it with the attractive trait. Attractive is what the trait is known in the game, but in the files it's actually known as fair. So uh, removing the trait attractive will do nothing, only removing the trait fair will actually remove the attractive trait. And because we are now not editing our own character, we need the character ID. So uh, once you have typed in the console command and the name of the uh, trait that you want to remove, you then need to type in the character's ID, which would be 21010037513751. Hit enter, and there you go. Uh, Lady Shella is no longer attractive. So this is basically how you can change your character's uh, traits. And yeah, that, that is basically the basic of uh, modding or editing your characters while you're in game. Now, the character ID is actually also important for, um, well, changing your character um, or changing your character's attributes while in the save file. So, uh, before you actually close the game, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. First off, it's kind of important that you actually make sure that you have that you have written down your character's ID. Maybe your personal character is not as important, but any other character that you want to find in the save files is easiest found 
by uh, searching for this character's special ID. So before you close the game, make sure that you actually write down this character's ID so you can find it later on. And another thing is that's important is that when you want to edit your save files, you do make sure that when saving the game, uh, you untick this box right here. Uh, you don't want to have your save games compressed because um, compressed save files are not, um, you're not able to edit them. So you, know, you need to make sure that your games are uncompressed uh, then you can save that and you can edit them. I'm not going to do that right now because this is obviously a save file that I'm actually using. Um, but yeah, so now that I've talked about how to do these things in the game, I will show you where you can find the uh, names of the traits and I will also tell you how you can actually move one character from one save file to another. So I'll see you guys in a second. Now before we go ahead and edit some save files, I quickly want to show you where you can get all of the useful information about traits, religions, cultures, and what they're called in the files, uh, so that you can effectively use your console command. So um, if you have your regular PC, this is simply computer, documents, or C documents, Paradox Interactive, then click on Crusader Kings 2, then disregard Game of Thrones or any other mod for now, um, and click on mod instead, and then click on the respective mod that you're actually interested in, right? And then click on common, and then that uh, is where you want to be. So this is basically where you can find your cultures, religions, traits, and what they are called in the game. So let's quickly have a look at the traits. Um, for example, well, there, there's, you know, dragon traits is most definitely or most probably found uh, when you click on dragon traits, but uh, you, if you're looking for a specific trait, you usually have to do a little bit of looking around before you can actually find it. Um, usually in these first text documents, you'll actually find the vanilla trait. So if we have a look at here, we can actually see the education and what it's called. So if you want to have the tier one intrigue education for your character, you need to type in amateurish plotter. This is the actual name you need to type in, nothing else. But yeah, so uh, this is the basic idea. I don't really want to spend too much time here again. And now I will show you guys how you can mod your save files. So once again, we find ourselves at C Documents Paradox Interactive. This time we're going to click on Crusader Kings 2 again. And this time we're going to immediately click on Game of Thrones right here because this will bring us to save games. And then we can find all of the save games that we might be interested in actually editing. Now, uh, there's a couple of, I guess, software programs you could use in order to edit your um, save files. It doesn't really matter, but I personally prefer editing Notepad++ or editing with Notepad++. Why? Well, the other software program programs are inferior in the sense that they can't really handle the huge save files, the huge size of these save files. So they end up lagging quite a bit and that could get very confusing, especially if you are very new to editing save files. This is this could get very frustrating. So yeah, use New Plus Plus. It really uh, makes it a little bit easier. But yeah, so let's click on that. Now, uh, this is what happens if you use a save file that is compressed. You can't actually edit it. So once again, I want to stress this. In, I can't stress this enough. I want to. Uh, I want you guys to, when you save the game, actually uncompress. Uh, save them uncompressed because otherwise, this is what happens. This looks obviously pretty shitty. Now, um, once. Uh, you actually go ahead and uh, well save your save file uncompressed this is what it should look like for example right so you uh, you can actually see what is going on you can actually edit it now I've actually already gone ahead and found the specific information about a character that I'm interested in but I will quickly show you how you can actually do that so for example um, this is Theo Bracken, and this is all of the information that we have about him. Well, there's technically a little bit more in the save files, but this is all that is actually regarding the character. And even all of this information, we don't need. There's a lot of things we can cut out, and in, this, in the end, this is what it looks like. This is what it should look like. This is the only information that we actually truly need if we want to, uh, well, transfer this character to another save file. Now there's a couple more things that we need to take care of or well need to be considering but first I want to show you how to actually find this. When you open the save file you usually start out with this. Now as I said if you actually want to edit your personal character, the character that you have been playing with, it's very easy because you are being greeted with that character's ID right here at the top. So all you need to do is actually go ahead and copy this and then uh, go ahead and well, search for this. Now, depending on, um, well, 
depending on your save file, you might actually have to do some clicking, right? So you can change your direction and then, yeah, depending on how often you, or how many matches there are for that ID, you will actually have to do some clicking, but yeah, uh, essentially you will find it very quickly. So this is the information you want. I suggest that you just copy all of this, copy it all and uh, tr well, paste it into a new file symbol because this will give you a little bit better overview over what is actually going on. Now, uh, the claims as well as the traits, those are things that we have previously added with the console commands. So that should be pretty straightforward. Now, your religion is also something that you have either changed in the ruler designer or that you have changed using console commands. Now, one thing that actually disappears often in my save files is the culture. I don't know why. So basically, this is what it looked like after I, um, you know, got rid of all of the uh, chronicle stuff and all of the, like, all of this crap that we don't need. Once I've deleted all of this, I actually was left with this. And um, now I don't know if the culture will actually then appear in the save file. So I think what you need to do um, is just type in culture and then the uh, culture that you actually want for your character, right? So, uh, for example, I'm just going to give in. Uh, type in Stormlander here, right? Now, as I said, I don't know if this is a requirement, but I, it can't hurt if you actually type in the culture. Now, um, your character, one thing that your character actually needs is a father. This is highly important because if your character does not have a father, there's a chance of him dying off. Now, I haven't actually, I, I don't know if that is actually true. I have been told this is true. And so far from my experience, I can only say that, yeah, it probably is, but I can't say for sure. So you definitely want to make sure that your character has a father. And for that, you actually need a character ID. This is all you need, right? This just needs to be a valid character that exists in the save file. But you need to make sure that this father actually exists in the save file that you want to transfer your character to. Now, if um, this, if you actually just want to edit your custom courtiers in order to make them appear in one of my series, uh, what you can do is just leave this blank. I will find a father for your character. However, if you want to have a specific father, then go ahead and make sure to, you know, find this character's character ID and then please let me know behind it who this is. For example, you want your father to be Lord Aegon uh, II of Dragonstone, right? Which is actually Aegon the Conqueror, by the way, right? So this guy should be your father. So type in the, um, well, the this character's ID and then the name afterwards because it might be that on my save, on my game, that character has a different ID. It's very unlikely, especially with the historic ones, but still, just, just to make sure. Um, other than that, you obviously have your regular stats. Now, this is your base stats, the base stats of your character. Note that if you want to have 20, uh, I guess this is, what is this, stewardship? If you want to have 20 stewardship, don't just type in 20 here because that is just your base stat. This uh, is then modified by all of your traits, right? So um, it's, I think the easiest way to actually edit your stats is once again using console commands in the game. I wouldn't really worry about editing too much here if I was you because this actually requires you to know what you're doing. Now one more thing that is kind of important is your dynasty. Now your dynasty is usually, if you don't put anything here, right, you, you get the dynasty of your father. But um, this is obviously a great way to uh, create uh, cadet branches of uh, big houses. So for example, if Aegon II is your your character's father, you can create then a cadet branch if you type in a new dynasty. But once again, you need to make sure that this dynasty uh, actually exists in the other save file as well. So um, go ahead and look for this in the other save file as well, right? So 149. And you need to, I guess, put another equation sign behind this. And then you need to go ahead and find this uh, this dynasty. Now, for some reason, I can't find it. But I guess that's because I'm looking at the wrong direction. Um, apparently, we do not even have that. Oh, there it is. This should be it. Yeah. Okay. So this is actually our culture. Okay, I wasn't actually looking. So this is the dynasty um, of House Bracken, right? So you need to go ahead and find your dynasty in the files and also put this in here because this is important since your dynasty also needs to appear in the game. Um, so yeah, I think this pretty much covers it all. It could be that I have forgotten something. As I said, I'm not 
good at these type of tutorial things. I hardly know what I'm doing myself and now I'm trying to teach you guys how to do this. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you have any advice on how to better do this, how to more efficiently do what I'm doing, please leave that in the comments as well. And I will also link you to uh, some other videos in the description um, of this video so you can check out uh, some more information about this. Anyways, I hope that you found this useful. I hope this is actually working for you guys. And um, yeah, I'll, I, I guess I'll see you guys next time.